Welcome to readtheticket.com. Today we're going to talk about is how to find the Wyckoff 2 phase known as markup. Okay, let's just go to our information. The mark there are several phases within the Wyckoff chart analysis process. You have accumulation, distribution, redistribution, reaccumulation, markup, and markdown. In the accumulation and distribution phases, it is quite common for price to uh, trend sideways within a range, and price will, you know, it'll break stops, it'll do false breakouts both up and down, as the, the big boys actually do all they can to accumulate as much float as possible, or obviously sell as much float as possible. Now, once the uh, phases are completed, the process is known as markup or markdown, as when price moves from twenty dollars to a hundred dollars, or you know, inverse of a hundred dollars back down at twenty dollars. The markup process is the most uh, uh, beneficial phase to profit in the stock market. The markdown phase, once again, is a rapid price movement, but going short is a lot more difficult and it's more of a, um, a shock as prices, as you know, from 2008 crashes. It's very difficult to profit from and it requires um, special skill. But in the markup phase, and the Wyckoff 2 uh, uh, methodology, we like to um, use cycles and gain angles to determine a high quality markup process to profit from. The trading in the distribution and accumulation phases is quite treacherous just for the reason that there's no real trend, um, nothing confirmed um, and quite easily any, any small swings can be um, pushed back down and you really have to be a neutral trader specialist to profit in that area. Okay. For example, markup phase has some common characteristics. Normally the stock will be making frequent 52 week highs. The EMA 50 will be above the EMA 100. And if the, if the stock has good fundamentals, you know, growing sales and profits, growing stockholder holder equity, that's retained earnings, um, price will be above a, a GAN angle of one to one or better. That means it's going up at least one unit of price, the one unit in time. And normally mark up, will be seen to be broken out of a, of, a, of a phase known as accumulation. It means that there's been some sort of um, accumulation of the stock float and price has now been marked up so they can sell it at a higher level. And obviously another technical point is that the MACDs of these two patterns will be above the zero line. Okay, to find markdown, obviously a lot of the technical matters will be the inverse, will be below the zero line and these will be inverse. But as I said before is that price normally goes um, like a, a rhinoceros horn but it comes down like a fishing rod so that means it goes up nice and gently in nice little swings but when it comes down it comes down as a smash or a crash so it's a lot more uh, difficult to actually profit in the markdown phase you have to be um, a lot uh, more technical and um, skilled okay Let's have a quick look at the Apple chart. This is the Apple chart, and as you know, they based out here, and they broke up here. Obviously, this would have been a new 52-week high. Um, moving averages and MACDs would have confirmed it. But more point, more important for us is that price is above a one-to-one -one gain angle, which is here. And even better for us, it's actually above the, the two-to-one gain angle, which basically is, I'm um, sorry, two units of price to one unit of time. As you can see, price has just travelled up to here. It's been a massive um, accumulation um, of, of wealth. It had these minor reaccumulation phases here and broke out to the upside. And as you know, I think it hit $400 recently. So this is the sort of chart, the price action you want to profit from. As you can see, it had periods here of one to one, one to two, or really should be two units, of, two units of price one at a time. This this is the type of high quality markup. Uh, you want to find. So let's okay. Let's review the uh, S&P 500 ETF SPY with gain angles. 
the fine markup. As mentioned, we use our GAN angles to find markup of good pace to make profit. For example, here we have a GAN angle of 1 to 1, the grey line, and the price of the SP500 is on the correct side of it, so it's going up on a pace of 1 to 1 or better. This portion of markup here is going up better than 2 units of price to 1 unit of time. We've got a correction here. So again, the, the markup is quite ferocious. It's actually going up four units of price just one unit at a time. Break down. And when uh, a minor reaccumulation phase is here, we, we give it to the bias of accumulation because price comes down to one to one and then um, re accelerates up here from the, you know, the QE2. So we put that on there, and here we've got price going up at 2 to 1 or better. It's a very strong little correction there. 2 to 1 mark up there. Now we've had a, had a break here of the 1 to 1 angle so you never know if this is um, a change in trend um, because so it's come back 15% but at the moment I've got my GAN angle out here of 1 to 1. This is 4 to 1, that's 2 to 1 bearish. So I'm not going to get really bullish on price action until maybe we, we, when we have one a Christmas rally, so in the December period here we might be a, above the two to one bearish angle, and ho hoping to break the one to one gain angle. So I wouldn't even be looking at getting bullish until that part here. And even if it breaks up here, you know, you know it could swing around here. So as stated, accumulation, redistribution phases, uh, treachery. They're people hunting stops, they're trying to break um, false breakouts. That's why we want to avoid them. And technically speaking, as it's on the left hand side of a 4 to 1 GAN angle, we're really on a marked down phase. But as we've sort of had a couple of swings up, you could have gone short there and hoped like how it kept on going down. But, um, you know, like I said, it was very dangerous. To take between taking positions in here, only the big boys are taking positions are here. Um, and see what sort of phase you get after this uh, either accumulation or uh, redistribution phase. And obviously, once we've got got our this is a major index, we well, we want to dive into the index into the, the spider sectors to find out which sectors are moving better or. Um, or you know, a faster markup. We can also look at commodities. So once we've got an overall feel of our, of our index, or what's what's been marked up or marked down, we go in, go into our alpha and swing scan to find um, you know what's moving. Yeah, alpha scanner. Okay. What I like to do is I like to set sec, select our um, Watch list for asset class. This is a um, covers spider sectors, commodities, currencies, interest rates, ETFs of all types, and we I select the ones which are over moving average to find out which ones are the strongest trends. Then I sort them in alpha format. So this basically tells me, for example, everyone knows the gold's going up crazy. It's got the strong, strongest alpha. Um, relative to S&P 500, as you, as you can see here, this is the this is the last six months. This is the last 50 days. It'll be a bit all confusing, but let me explain. Can I pop up detailed chart? Here we have your your gold price moving up, just a trend above the two uh, 50, 100, and 200, 200 moving averages. Here we have the red one, which is S&P 500, and here's the gold. And as you can see, the raw alpha, this, this dotted pink line, is above the blue line, which is basically a moving average. As you can see, the gold, since about March, has been beating S&P 500, hands down, down. So if you took a position here on the red line and the black line, your, your money, your wealth, would have increased on the black, black line. Um, 
faster than it did on the red line, and actually would, you would have lost money here. So the alpha or the rate of change goes to the people owning gold. Now, obviously, that changes over time. Sometimes, if, for example, the S&P 500 did better here than the gold. So we want to we want to find find out which sectors um, that have the better alpha. alpha. That, uh, you find good sector, good uh, um, ETFs and sectors with good markup, and obviously the ones that are favoured by the managers at at the time that are attracting all the alpha. Alpha's basically, you know, people are chasing the bid. Another ex another process is if you've got more of the MACD and the green than the red, then the alpha, uh, then the trend is very very strong. So really, you only be wanting, only be wanting taking positions in markup phase. And obviously, the um, if the MACD is in the green, you've got a pretty strong markup. You compare that to one which has got poor marker. Well, we go under. We can obviously find something which is not doing very well. And we might run down the bottom here. Oh, poor old financials. Here we go. I suppose this could be the markdown phase. Here we've got MACD just starting to spend more time in the red, the red zone. As you can see here, since about March, the financials have been doing poorly since the SP 500, well, that's the main reason why it's falling. So it's got a, a pretty smart down phase since about May. All right. Point figure chart. I think BAC, um, Bank of America, a lot to do with that, and Goldman Sachs. So if you were shorting, that's marked down. Here you can see it's pretty messy. I mean, obviously the real, real um, shorts really that is a lot harder going short than it is going long, because nobody wants anything to go down. They do everything they can to get it back going back up. So we use our alpha rating to find out where the money is going in the asset class. Now, if I was just looking at the S&P 500, I probably want to only look at the sectors, the spider sectors. So I just type in Excel there because they're all this. So I've already got utilities and, and consumer staples going up. So that's not a good sign for trend because, um, you know, if only, if only utilities are going up. And all the other ones. So let's try. There's also another scan for sector group. We just type in group. Up, 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 up. Group. Uh, here we are, group brings up all the groups so we've got pharmaceuticals retail with good alpha over the term removing the average obviously, obviously the markets are down right now now so if I, retail has always been a favorite let's have a look at the retail because yeah, America is such a low dollar they're selling all around the world so they're getting here it says you can see the uh, MACD spends lots of time in the green up until about there Trend status is mostly green. Lots of swings we can see. And as you can see, the, the alpha light trend has, has been on, on the up for most of the year. So uh, finding markup on retail stocks would have been beneficial the last two years of, of QE1 and, two, and two, QE2. Right. Now, the other way we can use, we can use our swing scanner. If I go to my swing scanner. I'll, I'll select asset class, class again. Now this is uh, uh, the um, Ligre Ligre in, uh, indicator. I call it lag. Um, sort that on the bull, bull market. Uh, way around. Okay, as we can see here, this is asset class, so it's got currencies, industry groups, commodities, countries, ETFs, um, interest rates. So at the top of the table, right at the peak, the best trend probably for the last 
um, year has been what's this one? Swiss Swiss frame. As you can see, sorry, the Mimo, Mimo CD spends most, most of the time in the green. Good sign for markup. Trend status is also green and or better. Red on the um, the lag is very good. Lots of lots of swing. I mean, basically taking money from a candy here. Wait, wait that's not right. Taking candy from a baby. <laughs> a pretty good um, point and figure chart. So as you can sort of see here, we want to find markup, and obviously a trend like this is just making, um, making bank all the time. You're just not, not going to lose until everything starts going a bit, um, starts to bend. Well, there's plenty of, plenty of massive volume peak that goes those dark blue here. The idea is to find of markup and avoid periods of accumulation and distribution because they are treacherous uh, uh, minefields are dangerous to take trades unless you're, unless you're a neutral trade specialist I avoid I advise, advise avoiding distribution phases just trying to find uh, situations where price has been made Marked up deliberately uh, from say you know from twenty dollars to hundred dollars and just t take um swing swings as you go. Here's another favourite if Australian dollars much loved by the market. The MACD spends plenty of time. Certainly the trend is starting to bend bend, so it's time to avoid it. Okay. So next time you wish to take a position in the market, here's some questions for you. For the next trade you take, is the stock phase, is the accumulation phase. So why take the trade? Seriously, uh, that's it's very treacherous. Um, unless you can get a uh, determine uh, that the stock is in a, in a pure markup or markdown phase. Um, taking a, a directional trade is an accumulation. Okay, be a success in just determining the mark up and mark down. It's actually, um, go through the last year or two of your trading or investing and find out what, what you've lost money on. And to then go back and review was when I took a position there was was that on a mark up or mark down phase, and you'll probably find most of your losers will be in accumulation and distribution phases, or you got in too early and and the thing never really broke out. The other thing too, there's always a mark up and mark down phase somewhere in the market, and if you limit your exposure to and your your investing approach. To finding these mark up and mark down phases, you're going to get those 10, 10 20 percent returns off. You know your three to five five percent losses, because every time you have a five five percent loss, you need a ten percent uh, ten fifteen percent gain to um, recover your lost money. So you, if you have a strategy to say, is the stock ETF currency in a mark up phase? If it's not, I advise avoid taking a position. So it's this is what we're Wyckoff Two is all about, and what Wyckoff Logic is all about is actually saying, I'm finding a markup phase, and then I'm trying to determine the health of this markup phase to participate in it. We add into it um, gain angles and, and um, cycles to find out that the, the actual price action is swinging quite nicely, and uh, gain angles are at least one to one or two to one, so we're getting good price appreciation for our efforts. Thank you for uh, taking the time to listen to this video. Please view the site and investigate more. Cheers.